Good morning. I'm here with my herb garden today. I'm excited to share some of my herbs with you today. We planted these herbs early this spring and now it's almost the first of July and they've had pretty good growth. We haven't done a thing with them except watered them. I think I took the weeds out of them one time and we have a lot of weeds in here and we have herbs that need to be pruned so that they will flourish and keep growing beautiful for the rest of the summer so they don't get too tall and leggy. So what we're going to do today is I'm just going to get a close up here and show you how to prune particular herbs. Okay, I have a pot of basil here. I have a couple of different varieties and they're just random uh, basil seeds that we had. So I don't even know the variety name. But I have this one right here. It has two branches and I have this red one. I have a little tiny one here in the back that isn't doing so good. And what else I have here is I have weeds. I don't want to hurt the root system, so I'm going to take my clippers and I'm just going to go down under the soil a little bit and just cut the, the weed right out. So there's a weed, here's a weed. Those are lamb's quarters. Three lamb's quarter weeds. Now those weeds could grow back from where I cut them off. Sometimes it's better to pull them. Um, this is a, a lettuce that is going to seed. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to find his roots and I'm going to cut him off at the base. That way I'm not pulling it up, hurting the, hurting the basil plants. There we have the weeds cleaned out now. Oh, there's one more. Okay, the weeds are cleaned out. Now we want to work with the basil plants. So if you look at this plant right here, you'll see you have a main stem coming all the way to the top and on the top it's starting to flower. It's little tiny leaves are part of the flower structure. And what we want is for this plant to get bushy and big. So we're going to cut it off. Uh, we can pretty much cut it off anywhere along that stem. But I'm going to cut it right here. Move that so we can see. I'm going to cut it right there. Okay, now this one I'll take into the kitchen and I'll make something wonderful with it. So I'm just going to save that. Now I'm going to do the same thing to this one. I'm going to come down and I'm going to cut it off right there. And I have some wonderful basil to take in the house. But I still have a lot of leaves on those two stems so that it can continue to produce. Now let me tell you about the science of this a little bit. Back to Plant Science 101, if you ever took that in college, you remember uh, they were talking about meristematic tissue and um, the plant hormones. There's an auxin, which is the name of a plant hormone. In the science world, we call that a phytohormone. Phyto is just a fancy word for plant. So there's a phytohormone called an auxin, and it's always in the tip of the of this plant here. And a lot of plants have that. Peach trees have it. Um, many, many, many plants have an auxin. And what the auxin does is it tells the rest of the plant what to do. And so all the way down this stem, if that auxin is present in the tip, and it tells these other side shoots, this one, this one, this one. It tells them not to grow big and bushy and fast. So now we removed the tip, and so these side shoots, this one and this one, that one, this one, this one, that one, they will start poofing out. And when this gets bushy, then I'll have the tips of all those will start creating auxins. And then we have to remove those and we'll get a really bushy plant. So that's what we're going to do right here to this red one. We're going to remove the auxin. And you could just remove it way up here, right there. But I'm going to go down a little bit because I want to have some basil to eat in the kitchen. Okay, so that one's going to get thicker now. This one. And let's take this one down substantially. There we go. So I have some fun basil for the kitchen. And this plant will get bigger and fatter and happier. So that's an awesome thing that we can do to that. Um, and that's how you make basil to be big and beautiful. Keep the weeds out, give it water, and remove the tips. And use the tips in the kitchen. We have a sage plant. It's just a common sage. And it has some other plants growing in it. So this is a weed. We're going to take that out. And we're going to take that one out. This one I'm actually going to let grow. It's a pumpkin. And I'm going to fertilize this pot. And we're going to see if that will spill over the edge 
and actually grow a pumpkin this year just for fun. It's not going to crowd out and hurt this um, sage at all. Sage is very similar to what I just explained about the on the basil. If we remove the tip right here, so we're going to remove this tip right there. I have a big sprig to take into the kitchen. Set them back there. And then right here I have this branch and this branch and they're going to get really big. So I remove one and I grow two. Now it needs to have light. If this is shaded in here it's not going to grow. But I'm going to remove a few of these bigger ones. That. Like that. See I'm getting some of them out of there. So looks like there's some tall ones here. Remove that one. Remove that one. We can go take this sage in and make twice the big potatoes. Or there's a hundred other recipes that sage is super good with. Like sausage. That's where the main ingredient in sausage is sage. If you have a source for really good pasture fed pork. It has wonderful nutrition in it, nutrient dense nutrition, and you could get use this sage with it. It'd be wonderful. Here's another pumpkin. I don't want too many. I only want that one plant to grow. Okay, there's my sage. There we go. This is awesome. So that's good. So now that's looking good. Now it, this plant was already really full and big and beautiful, but we made it even better now by pruning it back. So that's how you would harvest to go and um, eat in the kitchen. You don't want to cut it clear off at the ground. We have a lot of um, foliage on there, a lot of leaves, so that it can um, grow and be beautiful. <clears throat> okay, first thing is get the weeds out. Here's the lamb's quarters. Way too big. Here's another one. Here again, I'm just cutting them off so we don't disturb the roots. It's not really going to hurt these plants if we did disturb the roots, but... Okay, so this plant right here, this is marjoram. Some people call it sweet marjoram. Now when you have a plant like this, I'm doing the same basic thing, but the leaves are so small, I don't just want to pick out each little one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather the entire plant together. Some plant, some branches coming over here. Okay, I've, in, I've gathered the entire plant together, okay? And then I'm going to hold on to it, and I'm going to come up halfway through the plant, and then I'm going to go another little bit, okay? So I'm taking off one quarter of the plant, and I'm just going to snip the whole thing, and it's beautiful. Here's what I've harvested to go in the kitchen. It's a bunch. It's all ready to go. So that is perfectly awesome right there. I'm just going to twist this pot around. And what we have here is a thyme plant. This is common thyme. There's different kinds of thyme. There's, there's creeping thyme. There's variegated thyme, which has different colored leaves. And what I want to do with this one is the same thing. I want to take the tops off so that it will sprout and get more bushy. So I'm going to bunch it together, and I'm going to take off the top fourth. So I'm leaving three-fourths of it. Go like that. And there we go, we're done. Here's a couple of stragglers. I'll go ahead and take those tops off right there. And now that one is pruned and ready to go. And I have a beautiful handful of thyme. I can go in. Thyme is very good with any kind of meat. All right. Right here is oregano. And this plant isn't big enough to, um, to prune yet. So I'm not going to prune anything off of it. If I needed to eat some, I could just take the tops off with a pair of scissors. But um, it doesn't need anything done because it's still pretty low. I want it to grow up more. Now chives are entirely different. If you pick a chive leaf off, it's not going to sprout a whole bunch more. They will sprout more from the roots down deep in the root system. Um, and these chives are just about perfect for harvest right now. They're growing beautifully. I'm not going to pick them today because I don't have a recipe um, to go with the onion chives here. But that is uh, a beautiful pot of herbs that is pruned nearly perfect. I love the way that looks right there.